You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, and more. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity. Provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments on everything from coins to tokens, futures, and even OTC options. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on the Crypto Rundown. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody, that music means it is time once again for the Crypto Rundown, the program here on the old Options Insider Radio Network, where we break down everything going on on the crypto side of the fence. We're going to talk the vol, the term structure, the skew, the volume, the options, the futures, some spot, all that good stuff going on over there. My name is Mark Longo, coming at you here live, 2 p.m. Central 3 p.m. Eastern. Glad to be back on the live train here on Crypto Rundown. Of course, we were off last week for the MLK holiday. Not that you didn't get a show last week. Hope you guys have been enjoying the great guests who've been rotating through the crypto hot seat recently. Of course, had RSX, BlockFi, a bunch of great people rotating through the show. And more to come. So stay tuned. I know you guys are enjoying the program. Glad to see you're enjoying something a little bit different from the network, which is always fun. And great to see a great volume of newcomers coming into the network who maybe otherwise... Don't know a thing about options. They want to dip their toes into those crypto waters, and then we lure you to the dark side of options. Either way, welcome. We love to have you. Without further ado, let's get right to it. A little bit of the old Bitcoin breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trading activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the show where we break down what is trading. Like I said, it's been great to have so many great guests in the hot seat over the past couple of weeks. It was also fun to get back into what's trade and sink our teeth into what's lighting it up out there in the marketplace. And a lot is lighting it up. Of course, our last live crypto rundown was two weeks ago. And back then, Bitcoin is hovering a little just a tick shy of 8,100, 8,099. To be precise, and coming into the show now, we're seeing it up over 800 handles from that point to as a little bit north of the 8,900 level right now, 89.27 to be precise. So quite a couple of weeks out here on the Bitcoin front, some calling it the crypto flight to quality. Of course, we've seen profound malaise indeed, a spooky sell-off in the broad markets over the latter portion of that couple of weeks, particularly today. We're seeing most of the major indices off off pretty strong, off over 1% in the early morning sell-off. Some of that mitigated, but then looks like it's coming back on again. So, of course, a lot of that driven by fears of exacerbating tensions in the Middle East and, of course, the lingering pandemic, perhaps growing pandemic fears coming out of China. Yes, the sell-off is exacerbating again. NASDAQ closing in on 2% to the downside, now about one and three quarters percent after having bounced and gone back to about only 1%. And it's like the S&P and Dow were bouncing as well. Now, uh, not so much. So all of those hopes that this was going to be a short-lived little bit of a sell-off, not quite our old friend Vix hovering once again right around the 17, half level. After starting the day over north of 19, 
So things are a little bit a little bit dubious, a little bit up in the air out there in the broad markets, but not in the crypto landscape. Nope, it's been rally ho pretty firmly over the better part of the last couple of weeks. And for those of you out there looking for an interesting bullish story in, in crypto, maybe this is it. Some people hitting us up with this. This is not a an indicator I'm familiar with, but then again, I've, I've made my views on technical analysis quite clear on the network over the years. Seems to have more interesting applications in the crypto space, I will admit that. Some people ask us about this guppy indicator. Where does this, this comes from? The one they sent us here is from a site I'm not familiar with, newsbtc.com. So that's your favorite. Have at it. But they're talking about the guppy. <laughs> Apparently, the guppy multiple moving average is what is... According to this, to this article, at least, and some others of you have written in about this, saying this is a, a fairly prescient indicator. It helped look at different moves in Bitcoin here. Guppy first turned green in April 2019. That's when we saw, of course, the end of the crypto winter and the really big move to the upside. It turned red back in September of last year, which is, of course, when Bitcoin turned to the dark side. And it supposedly has had similar switches when Bitcoin was threatening 20000 back in December of 2017 and other periods like that. So apparently, if you follow such things and are into such indicators as the guppy, the guppy is looking perhaps like it's the start of a long-term bull market. So there you go. All of you out there looking for your long-term technicals. <laughs> I'll have to ask the folks at Crypto Patterns who've been on the show a number of times what they think about this, the guppy. I just like the name. <laughs> but apparently, if you're buying into such things, Perhaps that's a signal. Let's look on to some more meaty, meaty numbers we can sink our teeth into here, some that maybe have a little bit more practical application. Let's look at the vol and all the other fun things we like to look at here on the show. Of course, a lot of this data coming courtesy of our friends over there in Skewland, S-K-E-W dot com. Check it out. One of the best players out there when it comes to all things crypto analytics. Even though i got to say our friends over there in Quick Strike adding some cool new stuff with the launch of the CME Bitcoin options. You should check those out as well. Realize vol out there in Bitcoin land, 30-day, of course, it's down a bit. It was about 60%, now 53%. So vol actually coming in. The implied not changing too much. Two weeks ago, it was right around 59%. Right now, about 57%. So not a huge change in the vol. Again, Bitcoin is moving. So it, there is enough movement to support and sustain these current levels of volatility. And that's clearly supported by what we're seeing out there in the marketplace. It's been since the beginning of the year, we haven't seen vol really erode too much. That's because there is movement. People always conflate downside movement with volatility because that's what we see in the broad indices, right? But at the end of the day, movement is movement. Movement is volatility. It doesn't matter which way it's going. If we're continuing to move to the upside, that's still vol. And that's being marked here in the vol levels we're seeing right now. In terms of volume, first off, on the options front, Bitcoin options are live. Since the last time we gathered here together, Bitcoin options are indeed live. Remember our last live show, people were writing into us, what's going on? What's going on? We're seeing no numbers. We're seeing no numbers. We're seeing no volume. It was a constant refrain throughout the day. We now know, of course, that there was some volume to the tune of around 54, 55 contracts on that opening day. A far cry from the 55, excuse me, from the 12,000, 13,000 we saw on the futures that Friday, which people were going on about. I think Bloomberg even had a, a big piece about how this is leading to historic demand for these options. Contract-wise, not so much. I have seen quite a few articles in the crypto universe since then about the notional value going on out there. In fact, that's what that's what SKU has to report as well. It's harder to get some of the contract numbers out there. But notional, oh, look how much notional has gone up. Two million, three million. The, the notional has doubled. <laughs> the only reason people quote notional is because the contract volume isn't there yet. That's why the crypto space does it, because the contract volume still really isn't there in the crypto derivatives. So they quote notional all day. It's infuriating to me. But c'est la vie. We're starting to see that adopted in, on the CME products as well. Hopefully, as the contract volume grows, we'll see that change a little bit. Let's look at Deribit first here. Uh, Deribit had a few interesting days. Remember, we like to use that 30 million notional barometer on Deribit for when it's an active day. And they've had quite a few days over that over the past couple of weeks. Uh, the 14th, pretty much right after our show last time, was the big day. 127 million go up on That's the most we've seen in quite some time. Uh, 17th had 82 million. 23rd had 69 million, and the 27th had 50 million. So some pretty active days over the course of the past couple of weeks. In terms of the big block prints we're seeing, remember, we'd like to look at sizable contract size. Again, not notional. Forget notional. Just look at contracts, see what's going on. And the biggest print over the last couple of weeks looks like it went up on the 22nd. It was a 500 lot of the March 6,000 puts. Remember, we talked before about how March is 
the new mecca for where all the OI on the crypto option side is aggregating. This seems to reinforce that 500 lot. It was done at a 0.0127 of a Bitcoin, if you're into such price levels there, when, when Bitcoin was at 86.43. So that puts it into some, uh, some perspective. We don't have a side for this, so it's hard to intuit whether they're buying or selling. Of course, of late, we have seen some interesting paper to that downside, so it could be more buying paper Going up out there. Also saw 286 of the March 5,000 puts going up on that same day. And also worth noting, saw 214 of the March 6,000. So more of the March, so a total of 714 of the March 6,000 puts traded on the 22nd. And then 286 of the March 5,000 puts went up. So funky one by three, maybe? <laughs> Either way, they're not marked as spread and they went up at. Close to the same price level in Bitcoin, but not quite the same. Obviously, we know things take a little bit longer to execute on the Bitcoin options front out there. But some related downside paper, maybe someone buying a strip out there, maybe someone closing out a lot of downside puts. They were looking to harvest some premium. Either way, downside is where the action was. Speaking of the downside, looking at the skew out there in Bitcoin options right now, one month at about minus 5.6. That's pretty much close to, actually, where is the average out here? Uh, right now, we just had it up here a minute ago. I'm distracting myself with <laughs> all this ETH options. We'll get to that in a second out here. But looking at the 25 Delta call, 25 Delta puts, a.k.a. that 50 Delta risk reversal going out one month. It's about minus 5.3% right now, and the average is well shy of that, about minus 1.6. So that looking a little bit some, a little bit some put action, maybe... Maybe that 700 lot of these March 6,000 puts had something to do. I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably. Let's look here and see what else is lighting up. Call the put quite a bit down, down to about 56% from 66%. That's on Deribit. We're not quite there on CME. We'll get to that in a little bit, but what's lighting it up out there? Open interest, Deribit up quite a bit, actually, up to $515 million from $450 million. So they added $100 million in OI since our last live show. Ledger X up to about $39 million, $35 million. And CME up to a whopping $11 million out there. So, and where the open interest is aggregating right now, looks like the lion's share actually is 10250 which is an odd strike choice here. It looks like about 5000 uh, or so, 15, about 6000 or so aggregating. On that strike choice, in terms of the months, again, it is March leading the most open interest with about 26,000 contracts open in March, followed by end of Jan, end of March, end of month Jan, Jan 31st with about 21,000. So, and then it kind of falls off a clip in February, only about 3,000 out there in the first week of Feb. So you get into the weeklies a little bit less, but the March monthly contract looking pretty robust at about 26,000. Let's get to the big story of the past couple of weeks, the Bitcoin options. Of course, it went live on the 13th there. And we saw interesting stuff going on. Again, everyone was hand-wringing. What's going on? What's going on? The biggest notional volume day was the 17th with about 5.4 million notional. Uh, We're still seeing, you're looking at the actual contract numbers, a little bit less. 54 million, uh, 54 contracts, I should say, that first day. And then that first day did a notional of a little bit over 2 million. And then beyond that, it's kind of been around those levels. Pretty anemic for the most part, 11, 18, 17 other days. Also worth noting, we talked about on our TWIFO program. Again, I encourage you to go check this out on QuickStrike. is a good place to do that. You can see on um, the Bitcoin, I think they call it Quick Crypto now, is their crypto subsidiary offering there. You can see a lot of these contracts that are going up, 11 and 11 lots and 8 lots and 17 lots are deep in the money. 60,000 puts, absurd things. These are clearly carry plays, clearly parity plays out there, which is why I've said before, take a lot of this notional stuff with a huge grain of salt. Because that's a deep media, 60,000 put in Bitcoin is a huge notional value, quote unquote, trade, but it indicates nothing. It's just a carry play. So that's why I don't like looking at notional. You have to look at the contract volumes. And so far, at least a couple of dozen here or there, not exactly lighting the world on fire, which is surprising because going into it, the futures have been lighting up and the futures continue to light up. In fact, as we speak right now, the CME Bitcoin futures have done about 12,000 contracts so far today. So fairly active. The options, not so much. Uh, last week on Friday, 10,500. Thursday, 14,500 in the futures. Wednesday, about 5,000. Tuesday, 8,100. Monday, of course, we were closed here in the U.S. for the Martin Luther King holiday. So not a lot going on out there. Well, let's just, just say that. A lot going on out there on the futures. Not as much still on the options. I'll get to my thoughts on that in a little bit when we get to some of your listener mail. On the backed futures front, looking at our old friend, the backed volume bought a good follow if you're interested in such things out there. 
at Backedbot. <laughs> I just love the handle. I love everything about it. And they did their weekly summary of the Bat Bitcoin Backed Bitcoin monthly futures. Easy for me to say. And total volume this month about forty one million. That's down sixty percent. And the max open interest is seven point seven million. That's down twenty one percent. So number is not looking favorable out there on backed land, even as the CME numbers, at least from a futures perspective, are surging. Speaking of the numbers and surging, we got to get some of those. What's going on in the old altcoin universe? It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right. Welcome to the altcoin universe, a portion of the show where we talk about everything outside of Bitcoin. And, you know, for the lion's share of last year, we kind of had a top five that was cemented pretty firmly in stone in terms of market cap. You know, it's going to be your Bitcoin, your ETH, and your XO, XRPs, and then your Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash somewhere in the bottom of the top five. And that was pretty much it for the entirety of last year. We've seen some interesting shakeups in that over the course of the past few months. And coming into showtime now, that pop, top five, top ten out there in crypto land from a market cap perspective has changed quite a bit. Remember, take these overall market cap numbers of the huge grain of salt. I think the percentages and the, and the rankings are fairly reliable, but the overall market cap numbers, again, a hotly debated, hotly contentious topic here. Number one, of course, Bitcoin, $163 billion out there. Number two, ETH, still holding it. Number two, about $18.9 billion. Number three, good old XRP, about ten and a quarter billion. Number four, Bitcoin Cash now with about $6.8 billion. And the top five, Bitcoin, Bitcoin SV now, $5.7 billion. So that's knocked Litecoin way down. Number six is not going to be Tether. And then seven is EOS. EOS is falling out of the top five. As well, Litecoin all the way down to number eight, three point eight billion. Then number nine, Binance Coin, around out the top ten. Good old Cardano, about one and a quarter billion out there. Let's move on to ETH. ETH's had a good couple of weeks, up twenty seven handles from this time last show, north of the one seventy level, actually one seventy one and a quarter or so right now. So almost twenty eight handles from where it was this time last show. A lot, a lot tearing up out there in ETH land. As we like to do, let's look on out to the ETH options. ETH, obviously, a clear number two when it comes to all things crypto options. Again, SKU is a good place to t- kick the tires on the old ETH options. Looking at the realized, not a lot changing. Again, similar to Bitcoin, not a lot changing on the vol front, either realized or implied over the past couple of weeks. 30-day realized up a little bit to about 71% from 69%. 30-day implied, so what the actual options are implying out there, pretty much unched right around 70%. Uh, call put down quite a bit, down to 65%, leading in favor of the calls from 83%. And usually ETH, at least of late, has been very call heavy, as witnessed by 83% in favor of the calls last show. This time it's down to a little bit more manageable, but still heavy, 65%. The volume eight, right now, the options volume averages around 1.3 million. Again, that's notional. So put that in perspective, 30 million average on Deribit. Average still a little lower over there on CME land. And it comes to ETH options, about $1.3 million. So we're still talking a lighter lighter volume product. The 14th was the big day out there in ETH options with about $6.6 million notional lighting it up. The SKU out there, again, at 50 delta risk reversal going out one month. Down, it's about minus 4%. Uh, that's also off quite a bit from where the average is, which is also about minus – I'm sorry, the one-month one SKU is about minus 2.6%. It's come in a little bit. Uh, it's still – more than the average, about minus 1.4%. So still showing some action there on the put side of the fence. OI also up quite a bit, up to about $29 million from about $19 million a few weeks ago. If you're wondering where that OI is aggregated, the 180 strike, which is a little bit out of the money right now, a little bit north of where we are right now, is now the open interest leader out there. So again, kick the tires over there on the ETH options analytics if you want to sink your teeth into more Ripple. Also moving from last show, up about two cents. So it's been a while since we've, we've talked about a decent upside move in Ripple. But, you know, this rising tide lifts all boats and is lifting Ripple beyond the swirling allegations of dumping and everything else that have plagued it for the last few months. Ripple at least managing to get out of its own way for one week, up to about 23 and a third cents out there now. Still a far cry from the highs, but it's not exactly threatening to break 20 to the downside anymore. Litecoin at about 59 and a quarter. Like we said, it's out of the top five now, so it's not as much, I know, on your radar. And man, how the mighty have fallen after the having, The mighty having that led Litecoin up and right back down. And Bitcoin Cash having quite the couple of weeks, up 107 handles to about 371. So just on fire out there in Bitcoin Cash 
land. Speaking of on fire, you guys are on fire with some of your questions. Let's get to some of those, a little bit of your crypto questions. You've got questions about crypto. Who doesn't? It's time to find out the answers to your crypto questions. All right, welcome to your questions here on the old crypto rundown. You guys clearly have the the CME options on the brain again, so we'll get to some of those here. Start off with N-State. N-State wants to know, what are your thoughts on the CME Bitcoin options now two weeks into the launch? Well, I kind of touched on this earlier, but, you know, it's still very much a a wait-and-see approach. I think I and a lot of people were expecting some more volume on that launch day, you know, leading into it, 13-plus thousand futures. It seemed like the anticipation was building. The volume was building. It seemed like they were on trajectory for a pretty strong launch. They've been hinting and rumoring at these products coming for nigh on two years now. So it had quite the runway, quite the lead-up to the launch. And for the lion's share that day when we could see zero volume transacting, it it was somewhat alarming, I'm not going to (laughs) lie. Part of that was due to the fact that of course, they see me tweeted out a link to an old volume page that didn't help. But still, the, the narrative got going pretty early that there was no volume out there. We knew that couldn't be the case, but we're having a hard time really tracking down how much volume had gone up. Turns out it wasn't that much, and it hasn't really been that much. And the stuff that has gone up has been strange, I think, to say the least. A lot of deep in the money, 60,000, 70,000 put strange parody slash carry plays, which is not what you usually see. Again, that speaks maybe some of the weakness of the margin going on out there on the futures and crypto side. Yeah, it's not still quite a, a big boy market from that perspective. So maybe that's why those carry plays make more sense out there. But that's not what I anticipated out there. So, so far, it's still wait and see. I mean, these things, I've said it before, whether it's these ones or the ones from ICE or some other ones, one of these listed options has to really make it, has to resonate with the audience in order for the crypto space, in particular, the crypto derivative side of the market to really make it to the next level. I know that's that's annoying to a lot of people who come to this from the crypto first side of the perspective and they want to say, you know, not like any of these centralized marketplaces. The truth is we need one of these to succeed in order for crypto to really take the next step to become a big boy marketplace, to have the volumes you really need to maintain itself, to have the access, to have the liquidity so people can actually trade this thing the way they want. So whether it's CME or others, one of these has to really take off. So far CME is kind of flagging. The ICE options haven't really lit the world on fire either. It's still very much wait and see, but early it's not, not a lot of volume. And I was hoping for more, and I'm hoping something will trigger it. The futures are clearly lighting it up. So there's a disconnect somewhere there between the futures and the options. I've said it before on Twifo and other shows. Maybe they need a micro or a mini or something. It's a 5X. It's extremely, extremely beefy. That's going to keep a lot of the retail out of the place for the time being. So maybe that'll help foster some more. I mean, if you're only doing 18 contracts a day, you want every contract you can get. So maybe a smaller size contract will help boost those numbers and make it more attractive. But right now, still wait and see. I was hoping for more. We didn't see it. We'll see if that can translate into more paper down the road. Hopefully someone will start lighting it up soon. JLC, a related question. They want to know, will the launch of Bitcoin options at their crosstown rival? Cause the other Chicago exchange to relaunch their Bitcoin futures and potentially list options. Well, the crosstown rival and other, I'm assuming by other Chicago exchange, you mean the SIBO? <laughs> they are, are the only ones who had a listed Bitcoin future. They, of course, famously or perhaps infamously delisted it right around the middle of last year. As it so happens, JLC, I happen to have lunch with those guys over there last week and I asked them pretty much this exact question. I said, hey, you know, CME is. Finally got the ball rolling on their options. What does that make you guys think? You guys got out of this game. Are you thinking about maybe getting back in? And they kind of said that what really one of the reasons they got out was the regulatory environment. It was not that favorable. So they seem like they are really waiting for the ETF to get approved. Once the ETF gets approved, that'll show them that the regulators are on board with all things crypto, and they probably will jump back into these waters. Now, obviously, they're not completely out. They're an investor in ErisX who we had on the show last week. So they still have skin in this game. But in terms of a listed product of their own, not so much. Now, granted, if the CME options start lighting the world on fire, doing 100,000 contracts a day, that may accelerate their time frame to get back into the space with their own product. But for now, it seems like they're waiting for the SEC to give that rubber stamp, and then they'll perhaps think about launching a new product. Got Bitcoin wants to know, how do you sell calls without getting margin called? <laughs> 
Uh, well, there's a couple of different answers. It's a little more challenging on the crypto front because, as we've seen, the liquidity really isn't there yet. Uh, so it's more challenging there. And a lot of the brokers, quote unquote, their exchanges also, aren't really there. So I'm going to answer this in a general options capacity and we can apply that maybe uh, to the Bitcoin front. But in general, t- selling calls out getting margins, I'm assuming you mean naked short calls. So if you're going to do that, any broker worth their salt is going to tie up a lot of margin as a result. Because think about that. Selling naked calls, it's like selling the stock short, right? There's unlimited loss potential. The stock can go to infinity. There's no, there's no limit to the upside of a stock or a Bitcoin or whatever else you're selling the calls on. Uh, so that's why brokers tie up a lot of the margin, which sounds like you're encountering. So there's a couple of ways to mitigate that. The first, the easiest, sit down, look at where you want, what range you think that underlying is going to move or maybe not move over the course of this next time period, month or week, whatever it is, because you're selling it. You don't want it to move too much. And you sell a spread instead of just selling the call outright. So let's say you want to, instead of selling some naked call, you're going to sell instead of maybe a $5 vertical or a $10 vertical. You sell one, you buy another call, $5 up or $10 up. In the case of Bitcoin, let's say right now we're at, what are we at? About 89 and a quarter. So let's say you sell the 89 half, 89.75 vertical, $25 vertical. You sell that for whatever, whatever the prices are. They don't have that chain in front of me right now. Let's say you sell it for a buck. So now you made a buck, you have $24 worth of risk. It's all very mitigated. It's all very concise. From a broker's perspective, that's a much more attractive pr- prospect because everything is, is lit up in front of those. So they'll take up much less margin because your risk is only $24. It's not infinite. Bitcoin's not, it can go to a million, doesn't matter. Your risk on that spread is only $24. So in that case, that's the first, the easiest way to mitigate your risk with selling calls is don't just sell them naked, sell a spread. That's something I would recommend from a risk management perspective anyway. Selling naked calls, that's a dangerous road to go down. <laughs> Spreads, I know it's an ad, people don't want to spend the money on the other leg. Trust me, it'll save you money in the long run. And the other side of that is you can go the covered route too if you're worried about the margin. You own the underlying, it could be Bitcoin, it could be Apple stock, it could be whatever you're trading, and you turn around and sell a call against that. Now you're selling the call by itself, Still, quote unquote, naked by itself, but you have the stock against it, so that's effectively covered now. So, if you do blow through that strike, guess what your broker is going to do? It's going to take your underlying and use it to fulfill that obligation of that call. So, you are covered from the brokerage perspective, so they're not going to take a huge chunk of margin out. It's effectively just a covered call. So, those are the two easiest ways to make your life a little bit easier, a little bit more manageable, and certainly to make your margin more manageable if you're out there writing calls all day, whether it's in Bitcoin. Whether it's an Apple, whether it's in Spy, whatever the heck you're writing calls on, those are definitely two ways to go rather than just naked writing calls because that can get dicey pretty quick. All right, we got time for one more here before we wrap up on our quick little crypto rundown today. This comes from Raleigh. Raleigh wants to know, why so many deep in the money plays in CME Bitcoin options? Well, hey, this sounds like an astute observer here, Mr. Raleigh. You've been watching the volume going up, and you're right. It is kind of head-scratching. Uh, only real answer I can say to that is that Clearly, you know, the margin has been an issue on some of these crypto derivatives products. Rates plays are usually ways to get yourself more favorable interest rates, more favorable cost of carry, more favorable margin as a result of doing that trade. That's why you see them going up in indices and things. You see boxes and other spreads like that going up as a way to to get a better rate on your capital over X amount of time. That's probably what's going up out here in the Bitcoin. It's, It's still very worried paper. It's one lot's. 50,000 handles in the money. It, strike selection is somewhat strange as well. So I haven't had a chance to really sit down and analyze it yet, but my first quick blush of it is that's probably what's going on. When you see these deep, deep in the money type things, you're looking at you know these types of synthetics being traded back and forth. You're effectively looking at some sort of parity slash carry play. And that makes sense given what we've seen with some of the shall we say, nascent margin, <laughs> that, or in the case of the futures, really no margin still available out there when it comes to all things Bitcoin. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode of the Crypto Rundown. I want to thank you all for joining me here. Don't worry, we'll have more guests in the hot seat to come. I want to make sure you guys got a fun, quick hit, a little bit of an update on what's trading out there in crypto land. Spoiler alert, quite a bit. Not so much on the options yet, but on <laughs> everything else, things are moving, things are shaking, things are happening. Stay tuned. Keep those questions coming. We love to hear from you guys. You guys have all sorts of interesting thoughts. Look at you. You're even watching the Deep in the Money Bitcoin Options plays. We love 
how savvy you guys are. Keep those questions coming, and we'll see you back here later this week for a lot more shows. Of course, we just finished the option block. Got OPR coming up later this week. We have the advisors option coming up tomorrow, our monthly show of that. That should be fun. We'll see if we can stream that out live for you guys as well. Thursday, we got Twifo and the option block Friday of all of you. So a lot for you guys to look forward to on the live front throughout the week. And then we'll be back here again next Monday for more of the Crypto Rundown. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>